Hey guys, this is the set of throttle body injection heads that will actually run someday. And I am going easy on it because I'm thinking, just because I put like 60 cuts in the last one or some ridiculous thing, I don't remember. We had uh, the bolt between the two intake ports cut right out. We had, uh, went right through the short side radius. We had a giant valve in it, a 2.1 inch valve. But we wound up getting ridiculous flows out of it as well. 318, I think, was the best we did on the intake. These are going to be a big step back from that. Because after I took a good look at the cutaways, there is not a huge amount of metal between the intake and the exhaust port on these. So a 2.1 isn't going to fly. So I cut it back to a 2055, which I know will work because I did it in the 90s. As a matter of fact, that is one of the valves I ran on the old work truck in the 90s. The exhaust is actually a Tulip Manly Severe Duty I wanted to try. It may not flow quite as well on, on this style exhaust port, because this is the same exhaust port that's on an 083 head as a throttle body injection head. It's a decent exhaust port. I was able to get some good flows out of uh, the one exhaust I did uh, a huge amount of work to, but it also had a much, much bigger throat. As it sits right now, our liquid looks fairly good here. It looks pretty good on the chamber. It looks okay on the valve. It does not look spectacular in the bore because we see a lot of... Uh, rain it looks like it looks like a cloud with rain coming down not really what we want to see okay taking a look right down its throat you can see we moved the bolt boss over but i still have a hundred thousandths of metal on that and i'd like to keep it relatively thick because i don't think i want to make a hole through it then again it depends if we're actually going to go for that nine second on uh on the throttle body injection head or make something that's more streetable. You can see the uh, short side was widened, but it wasn't it wasn't taking out anything like I did on the uh, the real big ports. Okay, pinch was rounded, but remember there's not a lot of metal on that uh, left side, so don't go hogging that out. It's got a decent size uh, opening. It's very close to a 1204 stock. Okay, so this one's probably like one of my earlier cuts, maybe number six or something. And uh, I'm doing that because I'm doing a completely different shape short side radius. I'm going to keep some metal on that. No sense in going through that. As it is right now, our speeds across the short side are quite good. They're quite even. Our swirl is a little excessive, but we're going to see how where we can get it. The exhaust is a little bit better, but it's not uh, anything spectacular. Chambers had basic cleanup. And remember, these chambers are relatively thin. We can take a look on the cutaway. There's not a huge amount of metal on these chambers, so don't go gutting them out. Okay, you can see this chamber right here. I fire our plug. Right, yeah, I took a, a little extra metal out of there because I can get some extra flow. I didn't take nearly as much off around here. I would like a nice amount of metal all the way around that plug boss. You can see how thin that is. That's less than a hundred thousandths. Mm, that's kind of pushing your luck as far as I'm concerned. As far as we can see on the, uh, the liquid inside the bowl and on the chamber, it's not bad where it is. Short side radius on our exhaust basically cleaned up and give it a little bit of a curve see where it is okay the exhaust looks fairly good it does okay where it is right now you can see I didn't make it huge uh, I did that one experiment where I did bring the entire roof up over a tenth of an inch this didn't get raised that much I did machine down the guide about a hundred thousands because it's just excessively tall and you don't need that much as long as we got about a two inch guide, I'm, I'm relatively happy with it. These have already had bronze wall guides installed and honed, so those are good to go. The seats are cut for 205516s. 
I actually machined them for studs and guide plates too. Of course, machine for studs and guide plates is an interesting term considering I don't have the machines to do this. The only thing I really have is a boss cutter where you have to take about a tenth of an inch off the boss to begin with because you're going to be using guide plates. So I can machine that down and that's after of course you pull the studs which is no joke. It's a lot of work to pull the studs on this if you don't have a stud puller. If you guys are interested in how I do all that and cut the threads, make sure if you're going to thread it, especially I got to do it by hand. I don't have a, a machine to do it. They better be straight. So that's the first thing I did on these heads is I put, I machined them all out for studs and guide plates. If you take a look, they look pretty good. They're all the same height. How do I do that by hand? With a file. It's ridiculous, right? I don't want to tell you how many hours it takes. I wouldn't advise anyone to do that. Just bring it to the machine shop and have them do it. Even though I did have them do that to a set of Ford heads and they put them in at the wrong angle. Yeah, stuff like that really aggravates me. But this is how I used to do it in the 90s. By hand. The hard way. You can see I also cut out for our spring perches for some big old fat roller uh, springs. You're going to say, hey, how come the exhausts aren't brought down flat? Well, when I do these, I put a 30,000 shim in them, and I machine it down to the 30,000 shim. That way I can put a 30,000 shim under it, put a cup on top of that, and good to go. Same way I did it in the, uh, in the 90s. I might as well show this to you. I did it. And I'm sure there's somebody somewhere that would like to fix a set of these up without going off the deep end, make a good truck head, or even a good street head, really. Now, these have tight throats still. I didn't open up the throats huge, okay? The intake throat is only 82.4. Remember, you got to keep a lot of meat on that inside between the two valves, so good to keep in, in mind. And the, the short side is not super thick, so don't don't take a ton of that out. The exhaust short side is offset because it works better that way. Right now we're only at 78. The number that flowed about the best was like 87.6, something like that, when I did all that exhaust port throat ratio tests. So I got plenty, plenty more meat to go, and then I can do my textures and stuff. But if you take a look where we are, yeah, we're all kind of low at 300. Now remember, these heads only flow like 180, 185 stock with a 194. Yeah, we got a way bigger valve, but we're still dealing with a super th tiny throat. Here, Whippy, just coming home. How do we top out? Well, if we use a, between a 5 and 600 lift cam, 213, 218, not great. Had we do on the exhaust, not great. 183 with a pipe. They could use a lot more work. All right, let's take a quick look at our air speeds and see where we are. Faster on the bottom than the top on the pinch. These are taken at 600 lift. Okay, I think they changed quite a bit when I did way more work to them. As far as your roof, this is like the beginning of the ramp. And this doesn't have a huge ramp built into it. Um, when I talk about the ramp, that's the center of the cylinder ramp, okay, where and we notch it out quite a bit. Not bad from side to side. And our short side is actually quite good from side to side, but we're going to have to open that up and get more flow around it. Our swirl is actually a little excessive at this point. It is a swirl head, okay, so it's going to have swirl everywhere, which is going to help if you do if you build a street engine out of it out of these heads. Somebody said a while ago, take a pair of these and then hook TPI up to them. They'll be freaking beasts. Bet there's some truth to that. Some of the stuff I do have to talk to you guys about. Well, let's finish these numbers first. How'd we do on our exhaust numbers? Fairly good side to side. Okay, not bad. A little dead in the bottom. Not bad where it is. 
uh, some projects I need to talk to you guys about. The TPI project was getting packed up, and the owner wants to start up a an 80s style drag race club, I guess you could call it. So he is actually going to be getting me a set of original iron Z28 exhaust manifolds that I'm going to wind up <laughs> trying to make the best out of it we can. It's got to look it's got to look completely stock. That'll be an interesting little experiment. It will be, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Okay, the project that Ford guys are going to go nuts about is this style car, which is a uh, I believe the customer said it was a 1966. This is not a picture of the customer's car. 1966 Ford GT40. The 40 comes from it being 40 inches tall. Equipped with a 289. It's going to be built for racing. The heads are actual Shelby castings that are brand new. No, uh, no seats or anything in them. Okay, may not be easy to see, but that's a C6FE head. Notice how tall that exhaust port is. I already talked to the customer. I was like, man, we may be better off if we take that exhaust port and braze it up a little bit, but he wants to leave it. He's not gonna, interested in brazing on brand new heads. Okay, he's got a bunch of them too, so this may be more than one project. Depends, of course, how it goes. What else is going to go on it? He's got an original Shelby four-barrel dual plane that's going to go on it. I also need to thank, thank Eric Weingartner for uh, testing out my uh, Holley dual plane, uh, dual plane, single plane on that 408 LS motor. It did fairly well. I think it did, uh, don't kill me if I get this wrong, but I think the best it did was 718, which is no joke. Uh, that's on a 408 flat top motor with AFR mongoose heads. I think the best it did was, uh, I don't think it, I think it did best with a 4150 carb. I don't think it gained that much with the Dominators. Uh, he put two different style, style Dominators on. He did a great job. Can't thank Eric enough for uh, for doing that. Now, did the Holly design beat the Vic Jr. design? I don't know. I haven't I haven't watched all of the lives. But the three-hour live, uh, most of that, I believe, is tested on uh, my Holly. He did quite a few. Uh, I think he did three of the top cams. So, And it had a really good flat torque curve. So that's all well and good. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.